It's more of a fizzle than atomic. <laughs> Hey guys, this is my review for Atomic Blonde, a film I've been very much looking forward to considering it's directed by the same man who directed the first two John Wick films. And everything from the trailers looked really cool. Cool music, Charlie Theron kicking ass, which she has already proven herself to do from the Fury Road film. And really interesting color scheme. Least to say, this film is a bit lackluster. There's several issues that kind of hold up the film but I'll start at the very beginning. The film starts with Charlie Theron's character in a interview room and she is recounting the events that have just happened leading up to this. And I hate this cliche in films, mainly because it's predictable as fuck. One, it takes away any sort of surprise or tension from the character's kind of her state. We know she survives until this moment. And it usually always ends in a Kaiser Soze moment. If not her being the villain, her being not who she says she is, someone not saying who they say they were, that's what... I hate this cliche because it's so freaking predictable. Yes, that's probably how it is goes in the comics, but I don't like that aspect unless it's a very unique aspect. Also, the other biggest issue with this film is its pacing. It is very slow. At one point I checked my watch and I realized that it had only been an hour and I leaned over to my friend who was watching it with me and said, it's only been an hour and he looked at me and he's like, you gotta be kidding me. This movie takes a long time to get started. In fact, I would have a feeling that from the beginning of the film to the first fight scene, I have a feeling that there's actually just as much time as there was from the beginning of John Wick to the first fight scene. However, this film it's not edited badly, I'll admit. The editing in this film is pretty decent. There are some odd montage shots, some long shots of just nothing but music and the characters just kind of staring at nothing. But otherwise, the film is edited in a good way. It's just the pacing. There's a lot of stuff that just kind of lingers. Stuff doesn't really... The plot is really slow and then it catches itself up at the end. And that's the other thing too, how this film ends is just silly. It has all of these sort of kind of ideas of who is the mole, what's going on with the whole Berlin and CIA, MI6, KGB elements, and in the end it almost doesn't matter because of how the film ends. I will say though that the action scene that everyone was talking about, the seamless continuous cut of Charlie Saren going into this building and fighting off these guys in the hall on the stairwell all the way up to this room and then back down to the stairwell, that was very well done. It's not continuous but it's far far better, or better in the editing department than the fight scene in Daredevil Season 2. I like that scene, but I have to admit there were some choppy edits. This is pretty solid, and I like that it was more of a realistic sort of fight scene. She's not taking on a million dudes at once. It's not John Wick. This is a realistic, as much as it could be, situation. However, the first two fight scenes that come before it and the one that's after it kind of bored me. Like the choreography was not the greatest. It's very staged, it's very slow. And some of the stunt sequences aren't that great either. At one point, uh, she's driving a car and they're being chased by this car and it gets hit by a truck. And it is a terrible car flip. Literally, the truck makes contact with it and the truck does a full fucking 180 in the air. And it like looks like it hits it so slow. And what's terrible is you can see the gas piston. It's still there, and the smoke from it, from the gas piston, are so obvious. Now, I'm nitpicking on the film. The soundtrack is very good. Charlie Theron's character is pretty dope. James McAvoy is kind of a cool shyster. I like the colors. I liked how this film is shot. There's a lot of neon lighting. I think the movie looks cool. The soundtrack is enough to keep you in the movie, keep on bobbing your head. And when the fight scenes happen, you're like, oh, cool, something's happening. But when it comes to the end of the film, when everything is said and done, it just was kind of boring and it has almost no rewatchability except for whatever the fuck happens at the end because they throw like six twists at you at once and it just doesn't make any logical sense really. Again, that's, but that doesn't really matter. More so just in the sense of the story. It just, it didn't do anything for me. I liked Charlize Theron's character. I liked her commitment to being a badass chick in this film. I thought that the visuals were really cool. They're, the one fight scene, that one continuous one was very good. It's a cool idea, but it's just not, it's longer than John Wick and it has no right to be. 
It's 20 minutes longer than the first movie, and it has no right to be. I just thought it was not as cool as I thought it was going to be. There are some interesting moments, you might be amused watching it, but honestly I never care to see Atomic Blonde again. So in the end, my rating for Atomic Blonde is a 3 out of 7. It's an interesting time, you guys might be interested in that one fight scene. I don't know, this isn't the female John Wick I was expecting. Now I like that it's not like John Wick in the terms of Charlie Theron going around just being a badass and killing people. She takes some punches, she gets beat up, I like that aspect. But just the film story and the pacing are its biggest issues. It's just not, you don't care and it takes so long for things to happen that the only thing that's keeping you into it, honestly, is the music. Anyways guys, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed this review. See you guys next time.